Hello, everybody. We are going to take a fairly intensive and lengthy spiritual journey here today together. Uh, this procedure that we're going to go through is very, very effective. It's going to be difficult for you to watch this video. If you do to, to, to do this video with me, and not have a real spiritual insight. If you just listen to this on the podcast and you don't do it, or you watch this on YouTube and you don't do the exercises, you're gonna scratch the surface of what's available here. So I'm gonna advise you to please, if you're driving, see if you can pull off for a little while. If not, if you're at home, uh, get yourself in a quiet place and try to do this with me, you may really be pleased and surprised. So, right now, close, let's close our eyes. And now that we've closed our eyes, we notice that the eyes are still open. It's the eyelids that are closed. The eyes are still looking, only now, instead of looking at a light field, they're looking at a dark field. It doesn't have to be pitch black. It doesn't have to be anything other than what you see. But it's a dark field. So in this dark field, what I want you to do is I want you to go and see if you can actually find a boundary to this dark field, can you generally find a place where this dark field ends? If I go out, we're just languishing here, but if I go out and search for an edge to this dark field, I can't find one. There's simply one not there. There's not one there. There's just this dark field. See, this is what boundless means. Normally we use the word boundless and we put a little dotted line around it, meaning it's very, very big, but we don't understand boundlessness. You're never going to understand boundlessness because the finite mind cannot understand the infinite. But you can experience this by simply closing your eyes and noticing that there is a boundless field here without boundary, without edge. Now, take your attention and move it from looking from an edge to looking for a center. Can you find a center to this dark field? There's a sense of center, but can you find an actual center? What I notice is that in the absence of boundaries, there cannot be a center. So no matter how strong a sense of center you may have, it's not there. There's just this boundless, dark field. Now, there's no center. There's no edge. What about you? Where are you? You're not the beyond the edge, and you're not at the center. So where are you? What are you? In the absence of the body, what do you recognize right now? What do you find right now? I find awakeness here. Again, we're languishing. 
because I cannot find awakeness because I am awakeness. In the same way that I cannot find a boundary to this field because it is boundless and it is not other than me. Just notice this dark field. Relax into it. You may be noticing what we, you would call physical sensation. But notice it's really just sensation. <clears throat> it doesn't start in the body and it doesn't stop at the edge of the body. In the strictest truth, there is no body. And I don't mean there's just no character. I mean, there's no physical body. Not for you. You imagine them, you dream them up. But there's not really anything happening here. There's just this void that you are. There's no one else to experience this void. There is only the void. And if we hit truth, there will be no experience at all. Because there's no experience in for that which is prior to consciousness, for this dark field, which for the sake of languaging, we're going to label nonness. Notice that nonness is empty. Notice that there's not anyone to notice that one nonness is empty. There's just emptiness. Now open your eyes. Now we have a light field, well lit. There is differentiation here. There are zillions of appearances. And we call this light field, we'll label it oneness. And with this oneness, there is the illusion of separation. But it's appearing upon the truth of the unity that we discovered in the dark field. The dark field is not dependent upon the light field. There's no experience, there's no differentiation, nothing. But the light field is dependent upon the dark field because there can't be light unless there's dark. How can there be dark without light? It's unimaginable. So don't even try. Just notice that there was a dark field and now there is a light field. The dark field is nonness. The light field is oneness. Nonness has is the nonness is, is we could call it sameness because everything's the same in the fact that there's nothing that's nowhere anywhere and this is the flip side almost of that now that you're paying attention to this light field 
I want you to tell me, can you find a boundary to it? Go ahead and look around. Can you find a boundary to this light field? Can you find where this light field ends? You can imagine that, but can you find it? You can imagine anything. You're imagining bodies. You're imagining that there <clears throat> are two bodies here doing meditation together. But there aren't two bodies. There's just one thing. And you're it. And we don't even know what you are. But we can notice that this light field, which is dependent upon the dark field, is an expression of the dark field. This is the dark field showing up as oneness instead of sameness. This is Maya. This is all dream, every bit of it including this unit, including this character. This is not our dream. Awakeness is dreaming it's a Fred. That's the core dream. It's dreaming it's a Fred. And it's dreaming this world and it's experiencing what it would be like if it was a Fred in a world, yet you are the unborn. You're not in the world. You're not of the world. There's not even a world, but there's a dream of a world. There's the experience of a world and there's the experience of, a, of an individual, but there's only oneness. This light field, there's only oneness. So what is it? that has a sense of individuality. Well, it's oneness, isn't it? Oneness has this sense of individuality. But the sense of something is not the same thing as the truth of something. Now, since you can't find a boundary, and I know you can't because we are the same thing, and I can't find a boundary, there is no boundary. That's why I can't find it. Is there a boundary to your imagination? <clears throat> there really is not, is there? And that's what you're experiencing here right now. You're experiencing your imagination. You are divinity itself, and this is the divine experience right now exactly as it is. This is the divine experience. <clears throat> There's no other experience other than this right now. Nothing came before it, nothing will come after it. It's just this. Without beginning, without end. And how about you? Are you other than this light field? Are you outside of this light field? But there is no outside. So you can't be outside of the, the dark field, the light field. <clears throat> Since there's no outside to the light field, does inside the light field even make any sense? It doesn't. They depend on each other, inside, outside, yin, yang. So you are this light field. You are this oneness, which is an expression of that which is prior to oneness, that which is prior to consciousness. Think back about how things were prior to the birth of the unit that you're closely identified with right now the one that awakeness is using to experience itself.
I can't remember anything prior to the Fred unit. I have no recollection of anything. And I have no recollection of missing this. I have no recollection of any craving for other in this lack of other, in this absence of other. Eyes open, eyes closed, it makes no difference. Single field. Only this is the expression. The dark field is closer to the truth. So what I want you to notice is close your eyes again, please. And I want you to take the dark field. And I want you to imagine the truth. I want you to imagine that this dark field is actually a mirror. Now this mirror, there's nothing but you. And there's no outside to you. So what does this mirror reflect? It reflects you. And these reflections are experience for you. <clears throat> the reflections are experiencing itself. You are the mirror upon which reflections play. You are the surface of the perfect mirror, the empty mirror, upon which your imagination plays. Your imagination is showing up as these reflections in the light field. But there is no other, there's no light field that can be outside of this dark field. So somehow in a way that can't be understood, the light field has to also be an expression of this dark field. You are a mirror, the mirror of truth. And upon this perfect mirror of truth, reflections appear which are not true. We know they are not true because in the light field, things come and go. Notice in the dark field that nothing comes and goes. Not even the voice. This is the voice in your head. This is your voice. This is the divine voice. It is not other than the silence from which it springs. Because there can't be noise if there's not first silence. Just like if there can't be light and differentiation if there is not first darkness. There cannot be the appearance of movement in the absence of stillness. You are the stillness. 
upon which everything appears to move. You are the background to everything. And the foreground, all of these appearances are not other than you. You are a mirror, but you have come to identify yourself as a reflection. You think that you are the reflections in the mirror. Matter of fact, you've come to believe that you're one particular reflection that appears in the reflected world. When you are the mirror and you pay attention to the reflections and not to the mirror from which they stem, when you are focusing on the experience and not the experiencer, you are missing it. The experience comes and goes. The so-called experiencer does not. The experience in is your imagination. You are that which is prior to imagination, experiencing yourself as imagination. You are the mirror experiencing itself as reflection, identifying with reflection. When you identify with a reflection, you will come to experience truth through the eyes of a reflection, which in itself is untrue. In other words, the reflection can't see the mirror. All the reflections can see is what? The other reflections. For those of you who are familiar with Indra's net, imagine that right now. There is an experience of reflection. Let's not try to bypass it. As a matter of fact, let's enjoy the experience of reflection. Let's enjoy the experience of differentiation while holding firm to the knowledge that you are the still silent mirror. You are the near mirror upon which movement appears to occur. You are the mirror upon which sound appear, seems to appears to occur. But what you are is prior to movement. It's prior to sound. You are that which does not move, by which there can be movement. You are this silence upon which there can appear to be noise. An experience of movement, an experience of noise, but you are the mirror. But you've identified as a reflection. You've identified as a reflection living amongst all the other reflections. They are so many 
they feel like they are a threat to you. But can a reflection threaten a mirror? No. The reflection is not other than the mirror. The mirror is trying to make sense of all of this. It's trying to understand the reflections. The mirror cannot see itself. It can only see reflections. And the reflections can't see anything because they're just reflections. There's nothing there. The reflection of no thing appears to be something. It appears to be this experiencing. But this reflection of experiencing can only occur in the mirror. When you identify as a reflection, <clears throat> when you identify as a reflection, you forget that you're the mirror. You believe yourself to be a particular reflection a Fred or a Bob or a Mary or some other character. And you believe that's what you are. And it's no wonder you were trained to believe that that's what you are, weren't you? At birth, there was no, there was a light field but there was no differentiation. It was the perfect expression of nonness. And then the identification began. Then the training began. The training began to make this conscious presence believe that it was a single reflection. You're not just a single reflection. You're not just the reflection of everything. You are that by which there is a reflection. No you, no reflection. But you exist, reflection or not. And exist is the wrong word, but I don't know what right word to use. You have to just feel with me. This is new ground. Just feel. Leave understanding alone. The finite mind cannot understand infinity. The time-bound mind cannot experience eternity. Infinity is the absence of space. Eternity is the absence of time. When you believe you are one of these reflections, you think you're separate from the mirror. It may even feel like you've lost your mirror or you've lost your connection to the mirror. And so you go looking for the mirror. The reflection goes looking for the mirror. How long, and the reflections are within the mirror, 
So it's actually the mirror that's looking for the mirror. So nothing to the reflections, it's just mirror. Just appearances, this is the world of appearances. The mirror is the dark field. Appearances are the light field. The light field cannot exist without the dark field. But there's differentiation within the white light field. There is an appearance of differentiation. There's no differentiation, but there's an appearance. That's what the light field is. It's an appearance. But it's like a rainbow in the sky. The rainbow can exist only with the sky. And in truth, the rainbow is not even really there. How much does a rainbow weigh? How long is a rainbow? How much volume does a rainbow actually take up? Well, none, because it's just an appearance. It's just a trick of the light against the water, the moisture, the molecules. It's an appearance. You can't even put your hand through a rainbow because it's not there. You experience rainbow. Rainbow is not other than you. But you are not the rainbow and you do not need the rainbow. When you are this dark field, there's no longing to be a rainbow or anything else. When you recognize that you are the mirror, the reflections that appear upon you are incidental. They count, but they don't matter. Some of them are important within the play, within the dream, everything is important. But nothing in this dream matters because nothing in this dream actually is. You are all that there is, but you have forgotten this. So all that is, is looking for something else. Oneness is waiting for another oneness to show up. The mirror is trying to find that which is outside the mirror, but there is no outside to the mirror. You are the mirror and you're looking for the mirror that you feel that you've lost your connection to, that's disappeared altogether perhaps. How long can the mirror look for the mirror without finding it? Forever. Seekings, reflections, seeker, reflections, go from cradle to grave without knowing that they are actually the mirror. They're not other than the mirror because there's nothing other than the mirror. They're not other than oneness because oneness cannot exist without the mirror. And there is no actual reflection. 
the reflection is hallucination or dream. You are that perfect, polished, shining, spotless mirror. And you are looking for the perfect, spotless mirror. You can never find what you are. What you are cannot be over there because there's no over there, over there. There's just this here now, exactly as it is. Until conviction arises, you will continually experience yourself. You will vacillate, you will oscillate between believing, un, between knowing that you are the mirror and believing that you are the reflection. Conviction settles all that. And then there's knowing and experiencing, but there's not knowing and believing which makes the experience completely different. It takes all of the heaviness off. It takes all of the danger out. It takes all the, removes all threat. What can threaten you when there is only you? What can you gain when you are already everything and the everything comes from nothing? What can you lose when you are already everything? which is the reflection of no thing. But until conviction arises, you will move from experiencing yourself as truth to believing yourself to be reflection. Conviction comes with clearing. There is an instant conviction upon awakening, but it's only for an instant. It's that instant. And then ego comes in and clouds and claims the awakening. A reflection has to, is declaring itself enlightened. But you, you can't have an enlightened reflection. The mirror comes to see that it is the mirror. It comes to understand that the mirror cannot see the mirror. But the mirror cannot not be the mirror. So-called we cannot see the mirror because we are the reflections in the mirror. And we're not even quite sure that we believe in mirrors. <laughs> We've heard there are mirrors, we've read there are mirrors, we've had glimpses where we thought there was a mirror, but then there was the light field, which was so distracting. Know yourself as mirror. Perfect, brilliant, spotless. That mirror is pure love. Accepting all reflections exactly as they are. Why not? They're just reflections. They count in the experience of relativity. 
but they do not matter in the non-experience of eternity. Sit with this. Sit with this. Then stand with this. Then walk with this. Then talk with this. Never let this knowledge go. There's nothing to let it go. There's only this knowing. And it's a knowing of an entirely different order. It's not a, a knowing of intellect or books or research. You know what it is because you are it. There is only it. And it is you.